Welcome everyone, I'm Sherry and this is Good Knits, my channel where I talk about all things knitting. This spring I'm planning to knit the Milady's Dress by Vert Knit or Ines Oliveira and it's going to be quite a big undertaking and I know this is a pattern that a lot of you have mentioned that you've also thought about knitting but you find it a little bit intimidating and therefore aren't sure if you want to get started and take on that big of a commitment. So. I'm hoping through this vlog series, of which I'm going to do probably quite a few 15 to 20 minute episodes over probably the next few months, I'm hoping that it will in the end make the pattern a little bit more approachable. I might also do the opposite and scare all of you away from it, we'll see. I also haven't really started it yet, so I am not 100% sure where this is going to go. But it's a challenge that I'm excited to take on because this dress is beautiful. I've been thinking about this pattern for well over a year and I'm just really excited to have this in my wardrobe. So this is going to be a series all about how I tackle that. Uh, I figure in this first episode, I'm actually just gonna go through the setup steps. There's 10 pages that are just explaining how you get started with this. Measurements and gauge are incredibly important and I actually have quite a lot to share just on both of those topics. So I figure the first episode will be all about setup and then we can move on and talk about the progress that I actually make on the pattern in the next few months. So if that sounds interesting to you, I hope you'll stick around. I hope you'll subscribe. I'm really excited to uh, go through this journey and share it with you guys. Today I am going to be starting a vlog on my Milady's dress and I downloaded the pattern a few weeks ago, finally talked myself into wanting to cast this on and this thing is 39 pages so I printed it at work and I'm a little bit overwhelmed but it is so big because it's so detailed. So she has created the most detailed but amazing pattern on this. So really it's taking you through everything, every single step that you need to do. Um, and also there is a whole series of measurements that you need to take. So it's truly a made to measure pattern. So based on your own unique measurements, you then modify at different points in the pattern um, to actually fit you. So I went ahead and did my measurements today and I'm not gonna film that part of the process because you are meant to do it basically in your underwear. So that feels not safe for YouTube but i have already gone and done that and it's based on the schematic here to help you understand where all these points on your body are and i now have the 11 different measurements that you need in order to start this dress and these measurements are what's going to help you decide how many balls of yarn so how much of the pure silk that you are going to need to buy and I still need to go ahead and plug this all into the calculator that she provides. So there is a Google sheet that is included and that will help me figure out how I now move forward with all these measurements. And then there are, I think like six additional pages in instructions and how all these different measurements are gonna work so that you know which part of the pattern to follow. So very curious how this is going to go from here. To understand how many balls of yarn you need to order for this pattern, you need to measure your desired dress length by your widest measurement, so either your bust, waist, high hip, or hip, and that will give you um, yeah, the area of the dress. So for me, that was 11,400 centimeters, and then you multiply that by 0.137 to calculate your meterage, which for me was 1,562, which worked out to 6.24 balls of yarn. I decided to be on the safe side because I figured my row gauge would also be a bit off, so maybe I'd need a bit more yarn. Uh, so I just got seven balls and I actually also have some leftovers from a top I made a few years ago. So worst case, I can dig into that little bit of leftover as well. So I think I'm gonna be safe for yarn. 
So that is how you figure out how much yarn you need. And then there's all these measurements that you need to do for the most important ones being your bust circumference, your waist circumference, high hip circumference, and hip circumference. And that is what you measure to, so this is kind of the diagram for how you measure these things. And then from there you mark up this sheet to then say what your actual size is. So for me, I have a bust of um, size four, a waist of size five, high hip size five, and then hip size four. And then you calculate your um, tailoring factor or TF in this case. And that means that, uh, what is it? So rather than just being the same size across your entire body, this will be what makes the pattern essentially made to measure because you're going to adjust based on your own unique measurements. So my tailoring factor is a bust of size four and then minus one because my bust is a size smaller than my waist. My high hip is a size five, which is the same as my waist. So I have a tailoring factor of zero there. And then my hip is size four, which is minus one from my high hip. So I need to keep in mind those measurements as I'm working through the rest of the pattern because you not only have like the size out of the 16 sizes that you are identifying in each section, but then you also have differing measurements based on your tailoring factor. So I ended up going through um, at least the first part, the whole bus shaping section. And actually I'll just get that. I ended up going through the whole first bus section and already highlighting the measurements that I needed. So waist size you mark as your actual waist size, but then for the lower bodice, you need to use your bust tailoring factor, which for me was the minus one. So it's really something that you need to keep in mind when you're going through, because I feel like it's going to be very, very easy for me to miss a measurement in here and use the wrong thing. Then you also have the added complexity of, you have the, Milady's um, calculator. So if your gauge is slightly different, so for me, I have higher uh, row gauge than the pattern calls for, which means I need to use the calculator to calculate specific adjustments based on my sizing and my row gauge. So then I also kind of have to have that to the side to double check where it says sometimes, um, uh, how does it refer to it? Uh, where is an example? Yeah, so on this page, it says here, or first increase row, basically as per the calculator. So that's something that I'm gonna have to be mindful of and just double check every once in a while as I go to make sure that I'm looking at the correct measurements. So this is definitely not going to be a mindless pattern. That's okay, I've accepted it. <laughs> Um, and I'm just hoping that I'm not going to make too many mistakes on this. So let's finish up my gauge swatch and then see if I can get this thing cast on. So I'm ready to start specifically swatching for my milady's dress. And I realized that I have a cumulus tee that I knit last summer or last fall that is also three millimeter needles on the pure silk. And this would have already been blocked and would have had some stretch from wearing. So I decided to measure this to see, okay, what gauge am I getting? And then I also have um, my pre-block swatch on the three millimeter needles that I was using for this pattern specifically. And I'm gonna measure that and see what I get. Okay, glad that I did that because gauge that I'm meant to be getting is 25 stitches by 31 rows in 10 centimeters. And what I'm actually getting from my cumulus, which was three millimeter needles, is 28 by 38. So I'm way off, which actually I knit the Milady's top last summer and I also had gauge issues. So I think Ines and I just have very different tensions so learning from that uh, mistake, which is also why I ended up frogging my milady's top, I definitely need to go up 
a needle size in this case because my pre-block gauge on the swatch that I already have that I did for this project is 31 by 40. So I'm three stitches off on my stitch gauge and two stitches off, no, so. Yeah, so then after blocking my stitch gauge, I kind of uh, got three stitches uh, extra and then two stitches on the row. So I am definitely off. So that means I'm gonna have to swatch again for this. And yeah, I think then because I'm so off, I'm gonna go up to four millimeter needles, maybe 3.75. I think I'll start with 3.75 on this and see pre-block how it is working and then maybe I have to go to four. But gauge on this pattern is critical, so definitely something that I have to get correct before I continue on. I got an exciting delivery yesterday. My yarn finally came, so I'm just going to open it right now. Nice. I forgot how much I really love this uh, knitting for olive petroleum blue. So I actually have a, I can never remember the cami number, cami number four, five, the broken rib one with the triangles. Um, I have that cami in this color. Sorry, it's morning. <laughs> I uh, am still tired. That's why I can't form words. Um, but yeah, I have a cami in that color already and I love it. I was remembering it darker than it is, so I actually think this might be okay to knit with, I hope. So I bought seven balls of that because based on my measurements in the pattern, it called for 6.24 balls. And just to be on the safe side, I figured I'd order seven just in case um, I got anything wrong and then that way I would be covered. So I also, while I was waiting for my yarn because I have so much pure silk sitting around, I could already swatch for this. I have been trying to hit gauge all week. So I had my original swatch, which was the three millimeter needles. And this was, uh, let me check. Yeah, so that pre-block was 31 by 40. The pattern calls for 25 by 31 and the 25 is not optional here. Like you really can't modify because there's just so many measurements. So adding rows to hit row gauge isn't an issue, but you have to hit stitch gauge. In the calculator that she gives you um, through Excel, there's no way to change that to modify. So um, I also know from my Cumulus T that because obviously this one's not blocked, um, that this blocked is 28 by 38. So three millimeter needles is out. I had done a poll on Instagram this week to ask, okay, should I go to 3.5, 3.75, four or bigger? And the majority said 3.75 or four. So I started to swatch yesterday for the 3.75. And that's just, from my perspective, that's way too big. That's not gonna work. Um, and I could just tell, like, it's very gapey. Even if I hit gauge, I don't really wanna dress with that um, kind of defini definition. So um, I did measure this quick. It's too small, thankfully. But I, the reason this is so tiny is I just stopped and was like, okay, no need to continue. Let's switch to 3.25, see what that gives me. So this is 3.25 done as the 15 by 15 roughly that she suggested. Um, and pre-block it's 28 by 36. And I quickly measured yesterday after blocking. So you have to be really careful. You're not supposed to stretch this swatch at all. You're just literally supposed to lay it flat, pin it out and then see what you get. Last night, I was measuring around 26 by 34, I believe. 
Um, and remember, I need to get to 25 by 31. So I think I'm still off, which sucks because I'm probably going to have to swatch again. Um, but I think, you know, it worries me if this is 3.75 and this is 3.25. I hope 3.5 is closer to this. So, yeah, if that doesn't work, if 3.5 ends up being too big, then I think my only option will be attempting to switch to a different needle material like bamboo. So I'm a little bit worried about how I'm going to cast this on if the stitch gauge is so important because trying to modify numbers within this massive pattern um, I think would also just be very confusing. I'm not sure it's even possible. So at least my yarn's here, which means I can cast it on. Um, but I'm going to go on vacation this week, uh, for four nights to Italy and I am going to bring my Gallant sweater with me instead. And then when I get back next week, I think I will hopefully have my swatch issues figured out and I can actually get a cast on. And I went through yesterday and actually highlighted um kind of all my measurements in the pattern because there's a lot of different things to keep track of uh so at least i think i can start the first section so that's the update for today I have been swatching for this for over a week. Um, I have my three millimeter needles. So then I did the 3.25 millimeter, which is this one. And that is 28 by 36 pre-block and post-block it's 26 by about 35. So still off, but then I did 3.5. And honestly, I think this is just, I'll also insert some B-roll. It's way too see-through for me. So it's too much of an open gauge. Whereas like, let's look at 3.25. Still not great, but a little bit more manageable there. I think I'll still have to wear something to be a bit modest underneath. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have it written down right now. I'll insert on the screen, um, what this was pre and post. I want to say it was, well, definitely post block. This is like 24 stitches. So, um, a little bit too big. I'd also originally, cause my three millimeter was so off. I started to do a 3.75 and then this was just like way, way, way too big. So I abandoned ship, uh, halfway through. So all of that said now, I've decided to go on with the 3.25 and then just do a little bit more aggressive blocking to actually hit the 25 stitches. Um, and then I will adjust in the calculator that she provides uh, the row gauge so that the rest of the measurements are corrected for that because that one she does account for, you can have a row difference, but you can have a stitch difference. Also worth noting that on this pattern, um, our like dress support chat that we have on Instagram, uh, everybody so far that has tried to gauge swatch for this has also been running into challenges. So I believe most of us have gone up to 3.25 millimeter, uh, but also I think a couple people changed to bamboo needles so i am using metal perhaps i could get closer to gauge if i did switch to bamboo but then i'm not sure what size bamboo to buy nor do i really want to knit silk on bamboo so i'm just gonna make it work with the metal needles but that's also maybe an option is switching material on the same size needle to see if that helps you with gauge but yeah, uh, if you're going to make this dress, I would say be very careful with your gauge. Definitely make sure you spend lots of time on the gauge swatching because it's going to be a very important step. Okay, I think I'm ready to get started. I've got my measurements. I've got my sizing down, my tailoring factor. 
I finally hit gauge somewhat on 3.25 millimeters. So I think we're done with the setup and it's time to move on to actually casting on. So I will see you in part two of this series. If you want to be notified of any future vlogs or my podcasts, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you get notified each time. And I will be back in a few weeks to update you on how things are going with the dress. Hopefully they're going well. I'll see you next time.